Hi guys, welcome back to Empress Empower. This is Evolution. <laughs> this is Ray. So today I wanted to, um, I've actually uploaded two different videos. I have the, um, the Jesus Christ is your real uh, twin flame. And then also I have the other video about Power Mate Activate, which kind of helps you understand what your, what a Power Mate is. But today, um, I don't know, God pressed it in my spirit that he wants me to, Jesus wants me to start doing um, live Bible seeking. Uh, so it's, it's, I guess it's like Bible study in a way, but where it's that I am, I've, I stumble across something in the Bible or I have a question about something and I want to figure it out. I don't actually know the answer to it. And because I haven't yet obtained the answer, it's, it's live in process. Does that make sense to you? So it's like my process in trying to figure things out and understand things. And he wants me to take you on that journey with me. So this one is going to be kind of hard because this one um, I'm reading, uh, it's Genesis It's in Genesis 43, and um, I just happened to open the Bible, and it, something caught my eye. Let's see. No, it wasn't 43. I'm sorry. It was 44. Yeah. Yeah. It caught my eye and it shocked me and I was I was confused and so I wanted to ask God you know like God I don't understand this why why is this here what does that mean it kind of got me upset because you know my mind I really truly um, I really truly have certain beliefs about certain things and then God will show me something in the scripture and I'm like huh but wait well, now I don't know. <laughs> so that happens, you know. And I've been studying the Bible since I was like eight years old. I've been reading it um, all my life. And yet and still, I'm still learning. I'm still growing and evolving. And so I wanted to share a little bit of that with you. Now I have my, um, my little journal book. I love this little purple book. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. I like that one also because um, I'm a descendant of King James. And it said that uh, their, their family were descendants of Jeremiah, Prophet Jeremiah, which is kind of neat to me. <laughs> I'm weird like that. So... And then I have, you know, my little notes and stuff that I take. So usually when I study the word, you know, I'm always, I'm always writing alongside that, um, my, alongside my Bible. Okay. So you guys help me with this. All right. And I love to hear your feedback and your thoughts, um, because it's in the Bible. And, you know, it's in all the translations. So it's not just this translation, which I'm reading the NIV, the New International Version, and also the message. I have it side by side in, um, in this particular study. Or, well, it's not a study Bible, but this particular Bible. Um, and so, okay, this is what it says. It says in Genesis 44. Now, Joseph gave these instructions to the stewards of his house. And Joseph at that time was the, um, basically like the second in command of all <clears throat> of Egypt. You know, he was that brother that, you know, Joseph in the, the coat of many colors, if you guys have heard that story where his father and mother favored him so much, they made him a beautiful coat of many colors. And he also would have visions and dreams and everything. And <clears throat> his brothers, his, um, his other brothers, they got very jealous of him. Now these boys are the tw became the twelve nations of Israel, uh, or the yeah the twelve nations of Israel, and so you know they're like the bedrock of Israel. But <clears throat> and Joseph actually his tribe 
uh, 12 tribes, I'm sorry. And actually his tribe was splintered into two and that was the Ephraim and the Manasseh. So there are two uh, tribes that um, actually Mary uh, probably is a descendant of between uh, that tribe and Judah as what God showed me one time in the Bible. And then she also has um, Levitical, um, where she's a descendant of Moses, because only a Coathalite could carry the uh, the articles that are inside the Ark of the Covenant. So she would have to have been, and that would also have made her uh, being able to go into the um, the Levitic, the uh, where the Levites were, to see Elizabeth because Elizabeth and her husband were Levites and they were in uh, they were working it was the time that they were working and doing their duties and you ha you can only be a Levite and go in there and so she would have to have been um, sanctioned to do that and Elizabeth did call her my cousin so Mary was a descendant of Moses and she also um, probably was also um, because at that time the tribes uh, Manasseh and Ephraim and Judah they had kind of submerged because of all the persecution and everything so she was a descendant of all of them so she was actually descendant of Manasseh, Ephraim uh, Judah and uh, Moses or the Coathalites or the Levites whichever you want to say so she was descendant of four and there you again you have four yes I'm strange <laughs> and God wanted me to share it with you so I don't know but uh, this is how my brain works and so usually I'm writing it down but I'm just gonna say it um, because I can't I I gotta hold my phone so um so anyway it's funny how here we got again number four um, as we're talking because this is Genesis 44 and like I had said the other day four is the number of the gate and or Dalit in Hebrew and so you have it twice and so you have two gates or two choices to make and um, here is number 44 uh, that we're reading the scripture but the punchline here and I'll just get to the punchline is that um, Joseph's brothers had came and they, they had sold him away to slavery and everything. They had wrote him off and told his parents he, he was dead. You know, they lied and everything because they were just jealous of him, his visions and all this stuff and him getting that robe and everything. And they're like, Psh, man, we're getting rid of him. Like, bye, Felicia, you know. And so, or Felipe, whatever. <laughs> no, no shade to the Spanish community. Love y'all. I don't know. It's just something I saw on Instagram. Anyway. So, uh, um, anyway, so, or two Felicias or Felipe's. Love y'all too. Mwah! Okay. So, anyway, um, he was, they were like, man, we got to get rid of him. So, now it's come full circle. Karma, so to speak, um, has bit them in the butt. And now they need Joseph because he's second in command of all Egypt and their land back where they uh, are at is in famine and they're starving to death. And he, because he prophetically was able to see um, what the famine, the seven years of famine that was coming and warned the Pharaoh, um, he uh, got them in gear and told them, hey, let's let's get you know some provision. God showed me that we need to have a storehouse of provision for when the famine comes. So the famine hit. And, um, and now they're seeking, not knowing that, that it's going to be Joseph, their own brother who they sold into slavery because it looks so different. And he's like, um, probably like 40 some years old here again is number 44. There we go. So probably be 44. I wouldn't be surprised if he was 44 at this time, um, years old. And they were coming to him and in need. And so he knew that they didn't know who he was. And he decided he was going to either, he had a choice. And here is 44, two gates or two doors. He could pay them back. Or he could forgive them so he had a choice and we're coming to it right here in um, Genesis 44 so it says now Joseph gave these instructions to the steward of the house he said fill them in sacks that's his brothers because he's gonna fill them with sacks of grain and send them off he said but in one of the sacks I want you to throw my silver cup in there he said uh, and so he did but here's the kicker when they took off and they were like, oh, yeah, we got the food. We're going to bring it back to dad and our little brother back home. And, you know, which Joseph didn't even know he had, by the way. It was the last one his mother had before she died. Um, Benjamin. 
and so it's like oh yeah we're gonna bring it back to him and everything so let's uh let's go let's go back and we're so happy yay we did it we accomplished it oh dad's gonna think we're awesome now he's not gonna feel so bad because you know his favorite son joseph died he's gonna see our worth now <laughs> yeah and so um then they're they're riding halfway there and all of a sudden the steward comes he stops them and he says oh wait up jack hold up hold up a minute he said uh what y'all let, let me check y'all bags we're missing something and so it says they had not gone far from the city when joseph said to his steward go after those men at once he said and when you catch up with them say to them why have you repaid good with evil? Here we got the good and evil, just like I was uh, talking about in that, uh, about the, the tree of knowledge, eating good, eating the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Here we got it again, paralleling, right? And we got number 44, the two doors, right? You with me? Okay. And he said, why have you repaid good with evil? Isn't this the cup my master drinks from and also uses for divination? Okay. So that right there, the divination, that Joseph uses the cup for divination. What? What? God, help me with this. I don't understand. Okay, and so now I'm looking through here because I know that that could not be true. For one, God forbids divination unless, like, it, unless he's talking about like the Uman and the Thuman. I can't pronounce that, but the, the, the two little things that the high priest, the, the Levites would use to speak to God and get a word um, from God or the casting of lots, which is what, you know, they did when they, when they chose uh, uh, who, you know, who would be the next disciple. But divination, it's saying divination, like in sorcery, like in witchcraft, like tarot cards you know divination and so I had a real problem with that because it doesn't make sense why God would allow Joseph to do divination he didn't have he wasn't doing divination when he was locked up in the jail and he got the dreams he didn't do divination when he was having those dreams you know he didn't need it so divination to me means you got to inquire something of God because you you're not able to get it naturally from the word of God you have to use some kind of tools or some kind of magic and so that didn't make sense to me and I was really upset and lost and confused on that so I'm going to search through the Bible I'm asking God to please help me understand and give me a word and understanding so I'm going to read through here to try to get an understanding of that so I'm looking in, and I don't know. So I don't have a preconceived notion yet. So you just doing this with me, helping me, going along with me, because I don't know. Okay. So Genesis 43, 15, it says, So the men took the gifts and doubled the amount of silver and Benjamin also. They hurried down to Egypt and presented themselves to Joseph. So I read that. Okay, and then I read this has all happened before. I'm trying to look for answers somewhere, maybe in the beginning. Somehow I get some kind of clue. Like, did Joseph say, Hey, we're gonna pretend I'm gonna pretend that, that this is divination or what? So I'm trying to get understanding. So, and it's like he's saying it's all right. So we brought it back with us. We also have brought additional silver with us to buy food. We don't know who put our silver in our put put our silver in our sacks. It's all right, he said. Don't be afraid. Your God, the God of your father, is giving you treasure in your sacks. I received your silver. Hmm. Jesus, the steward took the men to Joseph's house. He's asking. Hmm. Let's see. They served him. So, what I'm thinking is possibly, maybe he was trying to make them feel afraid. And so, and, and also to kind of really throw them off of who he possibly could be so what I'm thinking is that the reason why he said that is because he didn't want them to know that he was a Hebrew 
because a Hebrew would never say anything like that about divin using a cup for divination like the Egyptians do. So then that would be confirming to them in their mind that this was some this was some crazy Egyptian, you know, Pharaoh guy. I'm losing my light. Let's try it this way. There. That he was some crazy uh Egyptian Pharaoh guy and it would frighten them that they, they could lose their life. Like there would be no hope. So I'm thinking that that is why he did it. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out. So why did God show me that Joseph pretended to be a sorcerer? Hmm. God, show me your word. Well, what's coming to mind is, you know, back when I was doing that new age spirituality and stuff, I told people that I was a witch, but I really wasn't. I kind of, okay, I did that. Because God wanted me to approach witches and pagans and people like that and in a way that they felt comfortable so that they could understand more about Christ without feeling persecuted. And also because to me, it was just a word. It you know it didn't really mean anything. I could call myself a blue, a blue, but I'm not blue. That's the way I felt then. Now I understand that identity is really important in Christ, and that it's important that you identify yourself in a way that truly represents the kingdom if you're going to be an ambassador for God. So I understand that now. So was. Was Joseph playing around with his identity? Was this part of how he was playing around with his identity to deceive his brothers? So, probably so. I would I would say yes because if you look at the consistency of who he who he is or who he was in the scripture, it shows a man really dedicated to God that was just naturally born with gifts of prophecy and, and understanding and revelation. So if you're naturally born with these gifts, okay, why would you need to use divination? Hmm. Could it be, could we take Joseph at his word? Could we take that he did use divination? Maybe after a while of being with the, the, the world around him, after he got out of prison and he was seated on the throne second in command of all of Egypt and you have all these Egyptian sorcerers and d diviners, could it be that he decided to utilize some of their tools to divine to act to to hear from God that he forgot the innate gifts that God had given him and he began to emulate the world around him could that be why None of the ancestors of Christ came close to what he accomplished, that there was only one. Could that be Joseph's downfall? Was that he engaged in divination? Because here he goes and says it again in Joseph 44, 14. Joseph was still in the house when Judah and his brothers came in. And they threw themselves to the ground before him. Joseph said to them, What is this you have done? 
Don't you know that a man like me can find things out by divination? What can we say to my Lord? Judah replied. What can we say? How can we prove our innocence? God has uncovered your servant's guilt. We are now my Lord's slaves. We ourselves and the one who is found to have the cup. But Joseph said, Far be it from me to do such a thing. Only the man who is found to have the cup will become my slave. The rest of you go back to your father in peace. So, I believe that Joseph did fall into divination. You know, maybe that's something God wants me to talk to you about um, and share in my life because I was gifted with spiritual gifts. Um, I was born gifted with the prophetic sight. Uh, I guess at the age of five, seeing and recognizing Jesus Christ and then as I got older, I was able to see things that would happen before they'd happen. I could see angels. I could discern things about people. I had a dream that my father was going to pass away in three years. And I asked for, I remember walking around the house asking my dad if I could have this and that because I saw that people were going to take everything from me and I would have, have nothing to hold on to of my father that was his, that everyone would take it all and that I would be left with nothing. And so I tried to tell him, I, I want this, I want this ring and I want these things for me so I can pass on to my children of you. But nobody listened to me, of course. I was just a kid. And then three years later, he did get cancer and died. And the very ring that I asked for um, was taken and lost. So, and then there, there literally the, the things that um, my father made by hand, the dollhouse he carved for me by hand, my mom sold, and all these things, not knowing that he was going to die, even though I did. So I had, I would have prophetic uh, experiences, visions, revelations throughout my entire life. Experiences with, with God, experiences with uh, even demonic spiritual attacks and everything. Um, and, but yet and still, there was a time where I reached out to tarot cards and I became a psychic uh, medium and tarot card reader. And I remember thinking, well, you know, I'm helping people that I really, that I, you know, I want to use my gifts to, to help people understand more about their lives so they can make better choices, make better decisions, empower them. Since I, and then I had the gift, I just wanted to use it some kind of way. The church didn't let me use it. Uh, only one time did I ever get up to stand up and prophesy uh, something that God had me prophesy. And I have to admit, though, that when I did it, I was terrified. I was scared. I had my pastor. I literally held his hand like a little girl. I was terrified to stand up in front of everybody and tell them my prophecy. I, didn't, I, don't, I don't like standing up in front of people and talking. Hate it. You know, I'm shy. Um, but, you know, I did. So that experience happened. But just um and that was an amazing experience i'll share it with you where i literally was in worship and i got caught up and god just had me start writing and i i could actually translate the tongues of uh our pastor as he worshiped in tongues and the entire sanctuary was caught up in the holy spirit and everyone was worshiping and praising and dancing and and just glorifying god and and just the spirit of God came over me and I began writing and I wrote down everything he said and I was told that the church was going to be divided and that it was going to be a mass exodus of the church that members would leave a huge amount and um, that if they didn't do certain things 
and I wrote it all out and I gave it to them and um, and then I saw like a wall of fire encircle this entire sanctuary and I saw angels come down and lay hands on people uh, in the sanctuary and they were releasing demonic spirits from them they were healing them from the sick they were breaking them free from you know anxiety and depression and strongholds and things and um, I saw that then and and I remember that as I would see these things I would reach my hand out like this and pray and focus the power of the Holy Spirit that was coming through me to the pastor I I used to do that to connect the Spirit of God that was in me to flow through me to the pastor so that the pastor would could be nourished and fed from the Spirit so that he could be empowered to hear God's voice and to um, enact it on this earth and I would always feel connected in one with uh, the pastors, whoever was um, laying hands on people, whoever was praying for people or prophesying, I would just literally impart I, the Spirit of God in that way through prayer, prayer to uplift and encourage and empower, you know, them. And um, I remember as I did that, I saw the past, pastor, Mingo, um, actually, and this is of Jesus People Life Changing Church back years and years, about, hmm. 17 years ago when I was there I saw him stand there and he asked all the elders of the church to go in a circle around the entire sanctuary and and they did it just like the, the ring of fire went around and then he said he wanted them to lay hands on people out in the pews just like I saw the angels do and when they were doing that, then I saw the angels come and they, they, they lined up across the altar, arm in arm. And as I did, as they did this, I saw there was a veil, um, behind them, and it split in half, and waters burst through. But there were uh, sandbags along the altar where the angels were standing. And the angels held back the waters from flooding into the sanctuary and overcoming everyone. And just as, as that happened, then Pastor Mingo had all of the, the elders come and stand in front of the sanctuary arm in arm. So they literally enacted on earth physically everything I saw God do spiritually. And so later we had a huge hurricane hit Gainesville and it was the biggest hurricane we had had since Hurricane Andrew which was like I think like maybe the first of its kind or the first in a decade of hurricanes and um, everyone was afraid they were running to the church and everything and 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 people were panicking but I knew that God was gonna protect us and we were gonna be fine because he had showed me in that vision exactly that so I don't know I would have these visions but yet and still I ended up getting involved in doing divination and I would do uh, with those little pendulums and I would do tarot cards and all the not Ouija boards I think that's stupid but um, tarot cards and yeah, I thought it was stupid then it was dumb uh, tarot cards and all that stuff like that but I did what I called angel cards because I thought they were like you know Christian or whatever but it just you know and then that would lead into uh, reading up on witchcraft and trying to understand what that was and I just felt like oh well that's just you know calling on your the spirit of God to just empower yourself to do things you don't know um, what that is, is it's focusing on physical, tangible things to have the power. So what tarot card readers do, and psychics, when they're using cards and divination tools, what they're doing is they're saying that these tools are what is speaking. So it's idolatry. And they may not even realize that's what they're doing. I know that's not, I didn't realize it. 
but it's idolatry. It's actually creating an idol of an inanimate object and saying that it has the power to speak. So it's just like worshiping an idol and believing that that idol is going to talk to you. It's not. What I found is when I began shifting away from doing tarot cards and all that, I realized that it wasn't these things that were speaking. <laughs> I would look at a, a picture or an image and it was the pro my prophetic vision that would create in my mind from looking at certain things to speak or hear the word of God so to speak and so because I naturally had a gift of speaking uh, I mean of hearing God and seeing things prophetically even from birth because I naturally had that gift from the Holy Spirit because I spent time with the Holy Spirit I read God's Word I uh, worship the Lord and even then I continued consistently to do that I never deviated from worshiping God studying the Word of God um, even when people would come to me to uh, you know get a psychic uh, reading or whatever I usually began I would be like feel my cup Lord I lift it up Lord you know I would praise God I would begin with praise and worship and then I would give them a word of God you know from the Lord and I would always encourage them to read their Bible and to study the Bible and then I would usually after a while I began to just prophesy and I would prophesy to them before I would pick up the cards and I would tell them what God showed me and then I would pick up the cards and because it was coming for me not the cards really it was the same it would be the same thing and God was like why are you doing this don't you realize you're teaching them that it's the cards that are giving them this word and this understanding and not me don't you see you're leading me you're leading them away from me and so I wonder if Joseph had fallen into the same trap hmm let's go deeper So, sometime later, Joseph, this is, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Genesis 48. It says, sometime later, Joseph was told, your father is ill. So he took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, along with them, which, is, which makes up the tribe of Joseph, by the way. When Jacob was told, your son Joseph has come to you, Israel, which is another name for Jacob, rallied his strength and sat up on the bed. When Joseph saw his father placing his right hand on Ephraim's head, he was displeased. So he took hold of his father's hand to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to him, no, my father, this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know my son, I know. He too will become a people and he too will become great. Nevertheless, his younger brother will be greater than he and his descendants will become a group of nations. He blessed them that day and said, In your name will Israel pronounce this blessing. May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. So he put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, I am about to die, but God will be with you and take you back to the land of your fathers. And to you as one who is over your brothers, I give you the ridge of land I took from the Amorites with my sword and my bow. 
still not really getting the answer I want. But I do see that there is a trend here of the second born receiving the inheritance over the firstborn. And I think that makes sense because Adam was, you know, they say that Jesus is like the second Adam and Mary is like the second Eve. So it's kind of interesting how Jacob also was the second born and he received the, he received the anointing and the blessing over his brother. And then you have his son, Joseph's son, who was the second born receiving the blessing and the anointing. And then you have Jesus, who was the second Adam, who fulfilled the promise that Adam failed to give. It's, I don't know, it's a parallel. But for whatever reason, I still haven't figured out why Joseph fell into divination. Or was he just pretending but I don't think so I think he fell into divination I want to see did he ever get out of it is there something in here to say Jacob said to Joseph God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan, and there he blessed me and said to me, I am going to make you fruitful and will increase your numbers. I will make you a community of peoples, and I will give this land as an everlasting possession to your descendants after you. Now then, your two sons born to you in Egypt before I came to you here will be reckoned as mine. Ephraim and Manasseh will be mine, just as Reuben and Simeon are mine. Any children born to you after them will be yours. In the territory they inherit, they will be reckoned under the names of their brothers. As I was returning from Padam to my sorrow, Rachel died in the land of Canaan. So I don't know, Israel, they, they, they are the sons of God has given me here. Jo they are the sons God has given me here, Joseph said to his father. Then Israel said, bring them to me so I may bless them. So why did Joseph not bless his own children? Hmm. Usually the father blesses his children. Why did he have, maybe because he had fallen into divination. I don't know. Or maybe it was a Jewish tradition that the grandfather blessed the children. Or maybe because, well, um, Jacob was like the forefather of Israel. So maybe it was just a special blessing over him. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. You can figure it out with me. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Curious. I'm going to have to research this. I'm going to research that word in Hebrew. And then I want to I'm also going to find out like what they you what did he use the cup for and what what kind of what were they doing scry, scrying where they pour something into the cup and then they look in the cup and in the liquid they see it or was it like the what the those people that like they drink tea and then they dump it out and they look at the grains and they see stuff? I, I don't know. I mean, is that what he was doing? That's crazy. Like why would why would Joseph do that? I want to spank him, you know, like, don't do that. <laughs> no. Well, someone should have spanked me, too, because I shouldn't have done it either. But does he ever break free of it? See, he's kissing his dad. His dad died. And then they, his brothers decided to make themselves slaves to Joseph because they were afraid he might kill him or something and retribution. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. 
Joseph stayed in Egypt along with all his father's family. He lived 110 years and saw the third generation of Ephraim's children. Also the children of Machir, son of Manasseh, were placed at birth on Joseph's knee. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land to the land he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Joseph made the sons of Israel swear an oath. And he was placed in a coffin in Egypt. I'm going to find out the answer. I'm going to delve a little deeper into this later. And I'll get back to y'all. Because I want to know. Why was Joseph really getting into divination in that? Or, you know, was that just a ruse? Because he was trying to throw him off of who he really was. I don't know. If you guys figure it out, leave it in the comments. Let me know. Because I would love to know what you think on it. Okay, so this has been... Uh, getting answers from God with Ray. We didn't quite get the answer of that, but you know, maybe we could put our brains together and do that. Okay. I love y'all. Y'all have a blessing. Godful day. Bye.